God is good all the time. Everybody stand up. God is so good to us. We're getting ready to celebrate his birth. And we know God's got this. We, we, we love him. The, the world's gone crazy, but we never expect the world to be... The Bible said that the world is going to hate you, and, that, and that's exactly what it's doing. But you know what? We still love God because God still loves us. Amen? All right, let's, let's say this together. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, O oh Lord. Give Lord a hand clap and praise. We're going to sing some, some uh, Christmas songs today. Okay, ready? you got to help us out now. <clears throat> we, 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 we're the Snotty Frog Duet. You know what the Snotty Frog Duet is, don't you? We're both going. <laughs> Okay, Snotty Frog 1, this is Snotty Frog 2, ready? All right.
be with us in the remainder of this service today. Father, let your word come forth, Lord God, and touch our hearts, prepare our hearts and minds to receive exactly what you have for us to draw us closer unto you and to serve you better. Father, we'll thank you for everything. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Get your offer now. Now, the offering plate is in the back. When you first walk in the door, you can drop it in on the way in, you can drop it out on the way out. But if you have already dropped it in, just take your hand and hold your hand up. If you got your offering, hold your offering up. If you don't have anything, you better hold that hand up uh, because you want God to use you and bless you and you want to bless Him. Ready? Let's say, let's say this together. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap. Are we sing some old Christmas songs? Okay. I'm waiting for Vicky. Uh, I did. John McGus was oldies but goldies. The guy came up and saw a manger scene and he saw the, sh the, the Mary and Joseph and the baby, the little church scene, Mary and Joseph and the baby. And also there was the wise men and there was the shepherds. They're just 
big old guy sitting over there in the striped shirt. He said, I know, I know the shepherds, and I know Mary and Joseph and the Christ child, and the wise men, but who's that, that chubby guy in the striped shirt? She said, oh, that's young John Virgin. Round. <laughs> oh, come on, Biggie. Come on over here, I'll tell you another, another slide. <laughs> Same one. And this is the third Sunday of Advent. And Advent, um, as we've discussed the last two weeks, <coughs> we have four Sundays of Advent, hope, love, joy, and peace. Advent is a time to prepare for the coming celebration of the world, the first coming, as we shop for presents and cook extra goodies and plan our coming feast, we need to also prepare spiritually. The first candle of Advent Hope, which was a week before last, takes us back to the Old Testament and the writings of the prophets that spoke of a baby delivered by a virgin sent to save us all more than 700 years before the work. The second, the candle of love, which was last week, reminds us that love is a commandment that Jesus gave us and in John 3.16, it reminds us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. And today we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. <clears throat> As you move through the stress and planning and hurrying of the holiday season, don't lose sight of the reason for this season, the joy that it brings everyone, especially Christians. The third candle is pink. Pink is a color that symbolizes joy, the anticipation. It is a testimony to the power of the light over darkness. We prepare our hearts by renewing hope, growing our love, and <coughs> growing our love for God and others rejoicing in Christ and finding rest and peace. In John uh, 15, 11, it says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Um, he gave us joy and he wants us to share it. Uh, also, I'd like to share with you a couple other Bible verses. Psalms Psalms 51 12 says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with the free spirit and Psalms 100 101 says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands Also, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against all such there is no law. In other words, our joy and our love as Christians, there, there's, there's nothing out there that can keep us from that. There's no law against it. It is something that is within us, and he put it there for us to share. And with that, I'm going to magically <laughs> light the three candles of Advent for today. Thank you. Give a little hand clap. Right. <laughs> God is awesome. All the time, God is awesome. Get your Bible out. Turn to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke was a historian. He was a physician, but he was also a historian. And so because Luke was a historian, Luke gives things with pinpoint accuracy. When they go back and they 
go through ancient scrolls, historical scrolls, and they go through timelines. Even when they go with other countries that were there, including the Romans, they always find how uh, accurate and above and beyond Luke went to detail. And so now, here's Luke, and he is, again, we started last week, uh, and it was, I'm going to read a little bit of this again, and then we're going to go right into the sermon, because we're talking about miserable blessings. Now, now miserable blessings, you've got to understand, uh, I'm not here to make you miserable, because this week uh, we're going to see some, a lot more reasons why God lets you have periods and times in your life when you're miserable. And the reason you're miserable is not because God's not working, it's not because he's not there, it's because he's doing a work in you. And I can promise you, when you get on the potter's wheel and start spinning, you may get a little dizzy, you may get a little sick at your stomach, you may get a lot, a lot uncomfortable. So a lot of times when God is working with us, we're thinking God has forgotten us because we're going in such, such different ways, not understanding that we're on the potter's wheel and God is doing a very powerful, powerful work in our life. So, so here we go. So stand for reading the word. Luke chapter 1. You got your Bible, say amen. You don't say on me. All right, everybody's got it. Good. All right, Luke chapter 1. Let's just go ahead and, and start with verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth an order of declaration of those things which the most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which was from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mayest know the certainty of these things wherein thou hast been instructed. There were in those days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zechariah, in the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. <coughs> and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying uh, without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and the wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and men shall rejoice at his birth. Stretch forth the hands this way. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, and you are on the throne, God. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing, impossible for you. We give this day to you, Lord. And God, help us, Lord, to get the benefit of this Christmas. And also the benefit today of your message. Let, you, let us know that you haven't forgotten us, that you haven't left us, that you haven't let, let Satan take the best of us. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Now tell somebody the past is behind us. Behind the future is ahead of us. God is with us. Yeah. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, now going back, going back, because i got to pull out some more of these begonies. Three small boys were at Christmas play at school, and they represented the three wise men. And they, were, and they were to give their gifts to baby Jesus. The first boy stepped forward, held out his gift in his hands, and said, Gold. The second boy stepped forward, held out his gift, and said, Myrrh. The third boy stepped forth and held out his gift, and said, Frank sent this. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, Frank. <laughs> Amen. So now, now, just a little recap from last week. Not much, but just a little bit. In this day and time we live in, there's been a soft gospel uh, has been presented uh, in this last day and time. And I can promise you, this is not a time for us to be soft. But we see the stuff happening around us. This is not a time for us to have uh, our eyes all up in 
the sky or, or uh, be, a, be a, a Twinkie generation. Amen. We need to be strong warriors. So if you want to be an overcomer, you can't be an overcomer without the challenge. If you want to spoil the victory, you got to get the scars of that battle. So God's plan is for us to, to, to get in there, and he wants to teach us well. That is, there have been God's plan to solve gospel. He's rising up a mighty army, not afraid to face the challenges, not afraid to collect scars, to stand in the last generation and declare, we will not go silently in the night. So now, here we go. We're getting ready to jump. So they get past Zechariah, we're going to go into some fresh stuff here. It's easy to lose sight of the real blessings. You see, uh, the real blessings don't always come without struggle. They don't always come without pain. And I promise you, real blessings don't always come with answers. Often it leaves you asking why. <laughs> you call this a blessing God. I mean, I'm being blessed? Uh, tell me how. You know, Lord, if I'm so blessed, you know, then why am I so miserable? You know, you know, we try so hard when we see people to put on a mask. Yes, it's, it's, it's so true. People come and say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. You walk away and go, why do I say that? Oh, you're looking good. And they walk away and go, no, I'm not. Or, man, if God bless me anymore, you're going, really? If the truth be known, we'd all be coming here today. Some of us have bandages across our heads. Some have our arms bandaged up. We were walking on crutches. The rescue squad would pull a few of you in here. If the truth be known, because that's life. We're on a battlefield. And it's tough. And we fight battles every day. And so we're, we're, we need God to help us in what we're doing. So it's not a matter of earning our blessings. But it's a matter of letting God build us to the handle or to handle our blessings. And remember, listen carefully. Your blessing glorifies God. You may be the vessel, but the target is always God. Your blessings, you may be the vessel, but God is your target. So, so let's talk about the visible blessing starting. And here's where we ended last week. Zacharias and Elizabeth. I did it pretty quick there. Didn't Here we go. Hit her again. Get that thing going again. Well, come on. There we go. Zacharias and Elizabeth. Zacharias doubts the message, and he's miserable. Zacharias is stricken dumb. Now he's miserable. Elizabeth is happy, but she's hiding. She's miserable. The baby has not moved until Mary arrives six months later. She's miserable. Zacharias' mouth opens when he delivers the name John. So now, let's, let's move on. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Amongst women. And when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and his name shall be Jesus. Now, <laughs> let's get real. Can we get real for a little while? The angel appears to Mary and says, You're highly favored. And you're blessed. They've been also had to stop there, but now she's going to get pregnant without a man. And she's got to explain this to her fiance. I think it would have been even better if he'd have said, I'm not going to doubt God. God knows what he's doing. But if it would have been me, if I'd have been the angel, I said, Hey, you're highly favored, you're blessed. And get ready, because you're going to be stressed. She was known at this time, once it found out that she was pregnant, 
There was stuff going around that she was pregnant by Roman soldiers. There was stuff going around that she had given herself up so easy. There was all kinds of junk being talked about her. So carrying the Christ child was not the greatest of all things at that time. So here she is. I think about this show. Uh, uh, I have people I talk, I talk to them and they go, every time, every time God blesses me and I get a little ahead, something happens and it takes its out. What's going on? And I said, you're missing the whole point. God blessed you ahead of the zap so you could handle the zap. Amen? God already gave it to you so you'll be ready so when it came, you'll be ready to handle it. Well, here it is now. He's giving this to Mary because he knew although she was going to be stressed, she could handle it. So now, let's just, let's just go a little bit further in this, in this story. I'm not going to keep you long. Well, I may, may not keep you long. How about that? Right. First, Mary has trouble believing the angel. She's miserable. Joseph has trouble believing Mary. <laughs> Woo. And he's miserable. They take a trip to Bethlehem. It's 90 to 100 miles. Now, if you do 10 miles a day, which is really getting it, can you imagine taking a pregnant woman a hundred miles on the back of a mule, ten miles a day. Wow. And she's getting ready to have a baby. Miserable. Upon arrival, there was no room in the inn, so they had to wind up going to a cave. Miserable. The shepherds maneuvered in the night, in the night to get to them, so their journey on the road with them. Full of joy, the trip was miserable. The wise men traveled two years at night to get to them. I said two years at night because it took two years to get there. By the time they got to Jesus, he was a small child. He was not an infant. And if they're, if they're following the star, they've got to travel at night. So here they are. They're traveling at night for two years. They are miserable. Now watch this. <laughs> Joseph has a dream. He's told in the middle of the night, I need you to pick up everybody and move to Egypt in the middle of the night. Unexpectedly. Miserable. Herod kills all the male children two years and under. The whole place is miserable. We see these little things and how sweet it was, uh, you know, way in a manger and all that. It is sweet. Yes, it is. But if you were there where the rubber hit the road, you would find out this was not easy. This was hard. <laughs> this was very hard. And they had to have a lot of trust in God to do all of these things. So they were miserable, but they were blessed. Okay, here, listen carefully. Never judge your blessing during the process, but by the end product. You hear me? Never judge it while you're going through it, because I promise you there's going to be some things you go through that you're not going to like. But remember, when God is going to, going to bless you, you are the vessel. And after the process of receiving it, you become the conduit. You're the vessel. You receive it. And after you receive it, after he gets you ready to receive it, you become the conduit. And it passes through you and goes to somebody else. After all these people went through what they went through, God blessed every last one of them. And now we are in here today worshiping God because they didn't give up when things were miserable. Amen? They didn't give up when things were hard. They didn't give up when things didn't go their way. They kept moving forward and God blessed them. So now... Yeah, here it is. This is misery uh, is the process that we have to go through. The process makes you tough. The wilderness is there to purge you. It, pur it purges your motives. It purges your faith. It purges your fear. But what it's doing is it's preparing you for God to give you a greater blessing. So many times we want to think that God has left us and he's not left us. You know, the mighty army yesterday. This, this was something. Mighty Army yesterday, spoon feeding in the long run teaches us nothing but the shape of the spoon. Woo! Mm -hmm. 
spoon feeding you the law and teaches us nothing but the shape of the spoon. Lord, teach me to stand. I wouldn't put Lord teach us to battle or Lord teach us how to do what we got to do, but all I can think of is that one word is stand because when you stand, there's going to be battles. There's going to be some tough stuff coming your way. And in this last day, know this. Yes, God's poured out his blessings, but at the same time, we are, if you look out the window lately, if you watch TV lately, if you've been to the grocery store lately, the gas station, wherever you go, we're in a battle. And God's raising up a mighty army. Amen. So, so here, remember, oh, I got a little hit of myself. Let me back up here and read that again. Let's see here. Let go on by. Keep on. Come on, back up, bro. There you are. But now thus saith the Lord that hath created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, that you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Let's, let's just look at it in a couple other versions here. Okay, some of my favorite verses in the NLT, the New Living Translation. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created thee. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I love this. I love this. But now, God's message the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid, I have redeemed you. I have called your name, you're mine. When you're in, listen, when you're in over your head, I will be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, you will not, there won't be a dead end because I am God, your personal God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. Wow. God's got you. See, God knows what's best for you. That one, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Let me, let me read that. I have to remember this all the time. I have to remind myself of this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts... In your thoughts. I'm going to look at the message version. I don't think the way you think. The way you think is the way I work. God's decree, for as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work, and the way I think is beyond the way you think. Wow. Now let's go back to Isaiah 43 for a minute. I want to break it down. It says, now thus said the Lord, I created thee, O Jacob. Y'all say produce. Create. Say create. create. All right. Jacob means supplanter. Jacob means heel catcher. Jacob means deceiver, liar. God created him and he wanted to bless him. But before he could bless him like he really wanted to bless him, he had to make him miserable. Some of y'all think about that right now in your own life. And before God could bless Jacob to the point that he really wanted to bless him, to become the father of the tribes of Israel, he had to work in his life. Because he was the deceiver, the supplanter, the liar, the trickster, self-consumed. And so, he created him, O oh, Jacob, he created him. That word created means to produce or to, to actually to create them. But he said, I formed thee, O oh, Israel. Wow. Y'all say you reproduce. Recreate. recreate. Say recreate. recreate. So in between those two words is a whole, there's a lot of stuff. 
Matter of fact, Genesis is full of chapters and verses between Jacob and Israel. Wow. Because in order for God to really bless Jacob like he wanted, Jacob had to be ready, and he wasn't ready. Some of y'all here wondering, how come they're being blessed over there, but I'm not being blessed over here? Or why is everybody telling how blessed everybody is, and it seems like while everybody's is being blessed, it feels like I'm getting dumped on. Sometimes, without even knowing it, you're in the process of going from Jacob to Israel. You're in the process. God is changing you. You're on the potter's wheel. You're spinning. Your life seems out of control because you're on the potter's wheel. But God is changing you. He's recreating you and he's making something special out of you. And just to throw it in and let you know that it's going to be okay, he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what's going on right now. Don't be afraid that you're in the process from going from Jacob to Israel. Don't be afraid. I know what I'm doing. But it says also, I have redeemed thee. In other words, I'll say purpose. He's already paid the price. He's paid the price, but you're still having to go through because if you don't go through, can you imagine somebody coming out of medical school without going through all the internship and all the other preparatory ways, they just come right straight out of medical school to start a surgery business. Who'd want that? who want to go to a dentist that's in his third year of dental school and he wants to do a major reconstruction on your face? When Bethany had all that work done to her face, because when her, when her stepfather slapped her face in the wall two years old, it broke her growth plate. And her face was flat, and it grew like a color bulldog. I hated it. But at school, the mean people at school, the mean kids were color bulldog because she had a great big job. It's because this didn't grow. And in six hour surgery at UNC, the dental surgeons cut her whole jaw off and slid it forward over a half an inch. And then they titanium bolted it together. And then they put it back together. And it took her a month before she could ever chew hard food again because of that. And I asked that, that surgeon, I said, so you're a dental surgeon? He said, yes, sir, I'm a dental surgeon. And I said, what have you operated on? I mean, you hear a couple of dollars mouth open. He said, he said man, I've done, I've done hernias. I've done appendix. He said, I've been in with general surgeons in my training, and, and I've done all kinds of surgeries. He said, I promise you, you have nothing to worry about. Plus, standing over my shoulder is the number one surgeon in the world. How do you think all those guys got that way? They jump right out of school, number one in the world. Jump out of school and they're ready to cut a girl's mouth open. They pulled her wisdom teeth out from the top. When they opened her up, they went and pulled her wisdom teeth out. He said it was easy. I was reaching and pulled them out. Oh. Those doctors are blessed to be a blessing. Some of y'all have no idea of the blessing you're going to be to so many people. But before you can be that blessing, God's got to transform you from Jacob to Israel. Don't be afraid. He's got you. The world's turned upside down right now. It's because you're on the spinning wheel. Yeah, you might even get a little sick. It's okay. You're on the spinning wheel. He's redeemed you. You're his. He says, look, I've called you by name. I called you when you were Jacob. And now I'm calling you. Israel, thou art mine. Y'all say possession. When thou passest through the waters, I look at it again, think about it. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, I shall be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? 
Because it's during this process, God is moving you from Jacob to Israel. And just like that dentist, wow, just like that dentist, he looked like he's about 15. I started that since he got a driver's license. And there he was with the number one surgeon in the world, dental surgeon in the world, and they're going to cut our baby's mouth in a six-hour surgery. But in a six-hour surgery, they gave her a perfect bite. Y'all remember when she come back, how good she looked? Once the band just come off? Some of y'all got some of that stuff going on. You got to do some surgeries. You got to do some stuff. You got to be blessings to people. But in order to be a blessing to somebody, you got to go through the waters. You got to go through the rivers. You got to walk through the fire. You got to spill the flame, kindle up. But when you get through with this thing, and then you're going to have to wrestle with God. But I promise you, when you get through this, and when God says you're no longer Jacob, but you're Israel, it's amazing what's going to happen. I told you this isn't a normal Christmas message. <laughs> seasons of misery. I looked at my own seasons of misery. Here's something I realized. I realized, number one, that it helps us realize our own limitations. Number two, <coughs> it reaches. It causes us to reach out to God for help. We've got to reach to Him. We can't do it on our own. It reveals. It reveals God to His saving grace and His strength. And it causes an adjustment. It helps us to adjust our attitude. God, without you, we can't do this. But God, with you, we can do anything. You know, we used to tell Manny when we first got Manny, do it afraid, Manny. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. I know it's scary, Manny, but do it afraid. Do it afraid. And then God spoke to me and said, why don't you try taking some of your advice? Do it afraid. Do it when you don't feel worthy. Do it when you don't feel like you got it, you're able. Do it when you feel like you ain't got it. Because when you start working through your fears, as you start working through your fears, God's hand reaches out to us. We're waiting for God's hand to reach out. God says, no, my hand's not going to reach out till you come forward. Through that fear, and I'm transforming you from Jacob to Israel. I'll grab your hand. I'll pull you through. You will not be hurt. And you're going to be a blessing to so many people. Understand this. God's still in charge. He has your best interest at heart. His timing is always perfect. And when you don't know his plan. When you can't see his hand, you can always trust his heart. What I have found out is, I learned to thank God for my miserable blessings. Because he often lead to a time of hope, a time of second chances, a time of redemption, and a time of promises fulfilled. God has the God you. God sees you. God knows what you're going through. And God's got a plan. And you're in that plan. And God's going to use you to be a blessing to so, so, so many people. Let's all stand. Brandon, come play something soft and grow. I was counting it up, and yeah, I've been in school about 12 years. 
And each time I was going through something, learning something, either biblically, pastorally, or counseling and psychology, every time I was going through something, it seemed like I knew it was going to happen. God would put me in some kind of training that taught me how to get through it and to trust Him along the way. And I thank God because He told me one day, yes, you've got some schooling, but your real education comes when you start putting it to work. And I thank God for all the times he took my Jacob and turned it through a process to his Israel. Mary is so blessed. Joseph, so blessed. The wise men, so blessed. All those people in the Christmas story, so blessed. But at the time, there was a lot of stress. But the outcome saved the world. Today, with every head bowed, every eye closed, Nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. First, let me ask Is there anyone here today that would say, Look, I don't know Jesus. I don't know he's my Savior. I don't know what He can do. I just know that I need him. But nobody looking around, would you slip that hand up? I'll make an example of it. Just slip that hand up. Maybe you're here today and you would say, you know what? I found myself in some of those times of misery, didn't realize that God was bringing Israel out of me. Didn't realize he was taking the Jacob from me and bringing the Israel out of me. I got scared and I backed down and I'm not where I should be with God now because I didn't understand that principle that when I can't see his hand, I can trust his heart. If I'm talking to you right now and you're not as close as you should be because in the process, in the misery started, you backed down. But you're ready to get back up. Nobody looking around, every eye closed. Did you put that hand up? Bless the Lord, bless him, bless him, bless him. Maybe you're here today and you're, you're in that miserable season. It hurts, it's uncomfortable. The world's spinning around. So now you feel like it's all you can do to hold on because the wheel's spinning. I want you to remember this. Whenever this is happening, God is pulling the Jacob out of you and pulling you through to Israel. It's not one for done. It happens time and time and time again in your life. God pulls you from the Jacob and pulls you to Israel. We can look at the Christmas story and know that good things came in the end because they were patient every last one of them and did what they were supposed to do and never gave up every head bowed every eye closed if you're in a season of misery you just need God to bolster you 
And hopefully today, you got a clear understanding. Maybe God's pulling the Jacob out of you and pulling you through to Israel, the prince with God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you say, I'm in that miserable predicament, but I'm going to trust God. Just pray for me because I'm going to trust him no matter what. Put that hand up. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him no matter what. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Bless him, Father. Bless him. God, something special is taking place right now. Let's pray together. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that you have a plan for us. And I thank you, God, that you love us enough not to leave us in a Jacob position. But you're willing to bring Israel out in us. I ask you right now to help me to reach up, to hold on, not to let go in this process. Knowing that Israel is coming out of this. I may be miserable now, but you got this, and I trust you for what's coming. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Tuesday night, all it can, please. Come on, come to church. We're going to talk about we need, we need people to remember. We always need people to walk and pray. You know, and we need people uh, to even help out with some floats. And th this year's been kind of crazy because uh, the person who spearheaded this, well, there was two people that spearheaded One's been sick this year, and it's Rhonda, and the other one was Jeannie. And, and you never realize how much you miss somebody until they're not here. That's right. And she definitely, she grabbed that bull by the horns. And I, I, I go by her office sometimes, and she had those horns, and she would bring it down. And she said, Pastor, I ain't doing this next year. Next year, come along. She said, I know, give me the book. And I said, when I see her wrestling down, she goes, I ain't doing this anymore. And I said, next year, come. She said, I know, give me the book. But now, she's in a different kind of parade. But the angel man is awesome. She's seeing the Christ child for real this year. Think of all of our loved ones that's going on. Bethany, wow, I can just see her. And Maddie, her dog Maddie, I can see them running all around. And I can see him go and say, come on, Miss Jean, let's go. <laughs> She's going to be the one we're going to dedicate this parade to. So let's, let's do something. Let's make it good. Okay? This is going to honor her. And we want it to look good to honor her. Amen? So it's going to be good. And God's going to do something special. I believe it. Because of COVID and all restrictions, we're not going to have stuff over there. We're going to do Santa like we do up here. But you can donate candy to be thrown. You can... Bring a little gift if you want to that we can give away. There's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, uh, you can help put things together. But let's let's uh, let's get it going because I know you know somebody said, "Well, you're a Lynn. You went to the last minute." The funniest thing that ever happened. DC and Daniel were having the parade, and while the parade is lining up, DC and Daniel build a float. While it's lining up. And somebody hollered and said, what are they doing over there? I said, I think they're building a float. They said, do they realize they're in that line? <laughs> I said, they're making their daddy proud. <laughs> Linton, you break up the etymology of Linton somewhere. It's got last minute. So. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have a good time. And all during the week, you can call me, you can call Don. You want to do something? Say, I want to do something. We're going to find something for you to do. There's, there's absolutely, anybody says they want to do something, we will find something for you to do. Remember, this is going to be dedicated to Jeannie. Okay? And we want, we want this to really be good for Jeannie. Okay? Uh, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Now that we say the Lord's Prayer, 
want you to dismiss this in prayer, Brother Steve. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.